Hey YouTube, my name is Eve the Weave, and I told y'all I was coming back on this nice, hot, hot day in New York City, honey, to give you that Bobby Brown review, honey. Let me tell you, <laughs> this movie was everything, and it was only the first half, y'all. Woo, child. Bobby Brown movie was so damn good, I had to crack open the bottle of Hennessy early honey because i had to take me a little sip because tv was lit last night it was lit honey because not only that was on have have nights was on people was on their lives on youtube honey and it, <laughs> baby i was doing that i was on live people live chats and doing the bobby brown thing so you know i needed a drink for all that because you these youtube streets it's messy <laughs> anyway the movie opened up and it started out with Bobby Brown experiencing death his whole life at a young, young age. His friend died. I think his godmother died in the beginning. Like, if you miss something, this is one of those movies where if you miss something or you thought you missed something, you better record that and rewind that back. Because that's how I felt. Like, I was, in the, I was recording and still rewinding it because I wanted to get all of it, honey. I want to get all of it. Gee, honey. Bobby Brown's movie was popping. So, like I said, they opened up him talking about, I think, his godmother or whatever. And his friend Jimmy and him went to the park on their bikes. And and Bobby Brown, they started playing basketball. And Jimmy seen this guy go after Bobby Brown's bike or whatever. And um, Jimmy approached him. And him and the boys started fighting. And, um... Jimmy actually got stabbed in the chest. So Bobby Brown's best friend died as soon as the movie came on. I was like, well, damn, is the credits finished? That's how crazy it was. Is the credits finished? God damn it. So his friend died. And then in the fall of 85, Bobby Brown was already doing the whole new edition thing. And um, he was 16. He was doing a new edition thing. But you know, and if you watch the new edition movie and bring it all together with the whole, if you watch the new edition movie and then you watch this movie and then you compare it to the Whitney Houston movie, all of it aligns, a little, all of it comes together. All of it comes together. So he started acting up on a new edition tour or whatever and they kicked him out the group. And he was 16, so he had to go back home. So when Bobby Brown went back home though, Bobby Brown was not used to not having no money and all of that stuff. So he was living his best life. He said, no, 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 ma'am. I'm not going to be broke. He came back home with work, okay? Bobby Brown came back with, 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 with the bundles and all that. He wasn't playing. He had niggas on the block work early. I was like, well, goddamn, Bobby. He wasn't playing. And it's funny because as he's working and doing all of that and guess who pops up in the goddamn movie as one of his girlfriends girl the girl from greenleaf the light-skinned one the t.i was messing with and feeling on her butt girl she is his baby mother in this goddamn movie i said this girl everywhere when that bitch said she booked and busy that bitch was booked and busy yeah, <laughs> she popped up in the movie, y'all, uh, as his baby mother, and her name is Kim, or whatever. And um, Tank was in the movie, and he's one of the ones that signed Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown was with um, MCA Records, and Bobby Brown started doing his thing early, early. He started doing his thing early, and he had already had a baby mother. His brother, his older brother, which name was Tommy, was played by Makai Pfeiffer. And Makai Pfeiffer became Bobby Brown's manager because it was like his mother's not having it. His mother didn't want him on the streets hustling or none of that. His mother was not having it. The same way she wasn't having it in the New Edition movie. Hmm. The same way she wasn't having it in this goddamn movie. Okay? And um, he started taping and doing all, doing whatever he had to do. And Bobby Brown, baby mother, the first one name is Malika. And he had a son with her early. Like, even before he started doing his own thing, he already had a son by the name of London or whatever. 
And, you know, she popped up on the set telling him, listen, like, you don't get to see your son. And Bobby Brown's telling her, like, listen, I sent him pampers and this and this and that. She said, that's not enough. You need to see your kid. Regular baby mother shit. So he dancing around doing what he do. But his first official recording was with L.A. Reed and Babyface or whatever. And he started recording with them. And that's when he did that song, Rock With You. I want to rock with you, baby. He did that song with them. And they didn't realize how good Bobby Brown was. So I'm trying to go through this because it was a long movie. The movie was two hours and 30 minutes long. And that was just the first half, honey. And I'm trying to think, is the second half going to be the same length? Because if it is, then that's going to it, it has to be because it's too much tea to spill. And like, you know, they had, I see why they had to break it down. But if it was like on HBO or Netflix or something like that, they would have had to break it down like that. But if it's going to be two and a half hours last night and tonight, it's going to be crazy. Okay, so the um, spring of 88, that's when he met up with Teddy Riley in New York and Harlem. And Teddy Riley is the one that gave him that beat for my prerogative. At this point, he was starting to become big and he started opening up for new edition. So you know, like he told his brother, he said, now I'm gonna really show them how I give it up. He said, now I'm opening up for them as a solo act, how they like that shit. And he showed he showed up and showed out like Bobby Brown do. And um, January of 89, um, he did a show in Columbus, Georgia. And before he stepped on stage, the cops was telling him that, um, listen, you can't be doing all that explicit stuff here. We don't tolerate that. And you can't be, basically, Bobby Brown was already pulling stripper moves on stage, honey. He was already doing that, honey. And this is why they called him the bad boy of R&B. He was already pulling, you know, he was already pulling girls on stage, pulling his stripper moves out on them and flipping them and tossing them up in the air and all that good stuff. So when he went to do that show, in Columbus, Georgia, Homeboy did it on purpose. He did it on purpose because he wanted his album to do double platinum. So he pulled the girl right up on stage and started doing all them stripper moves on her and they locked his ass up. And like he told his brother, my shit went double platinum, didn't it? So Bobby Brown was the first one to pull a stunt in show business, that had been going on for decades. These motherfuckers just now in these 2000s, in 2018, they just know, they just started doing it. Takashi and them ain't make that shit up. We've been doing that shit for decades. <laughs> That's what Bobby Brown said. We've been doing that shit for decades, nigga. Pulling stunts, going to jail. <laughs> And that's exactly what he did. He pulled the stunt, went to jail on purpose, and his shit hit double platinum. And his, his shit was already going to three times platinum. He wasn't playing. Her Bobby Brown was working. And um, then he moved to Atlanta, Georgia in 89 and bought a big-ass house for him and his family, his mother and everybody. And he moved everybody into that house. And, you know, the guy... I think his name was Brandon in the movie, in this movie, but it was the same guy from Get Out, you know, the dark skinned guy, the security guard that was trying to get his friend out the goddamn house. Honey, everybody was in this movie. Him was in it too. Him was in it, honey. The guy from Get Out. <laughs> he was in <laughs> the movie. So he was in it too as his financial advisor, and he was telling Bobby about the house and his money and all of that stuff. So that's what he was doing as Bobby's financial advisor. Yeah, I'm looking down because I got notes, honey. I got notes, front and back. <laughs> so at this point, um, Bobby Brown was already dating Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson was already big, as you know. Janet Jackson was already big, but Bobby Brown was already dating um, Kim and Janet Jackson at the same time. And um, as as Janet kept moving up in her career, you know, she met Elder Barge at the same time. And Bobby was doing his thing, so it wasn't like they was together all the time. So at this time, 
Bobby Brown was dating Kim. The baby, well, she she got pregnant while he was dating Janet Jackson, basically. So Bobby's blowing up. He's big now. He's doing the soundtrack for Ghostbusters. As he's doing the soundtrack for Ghostbusters, honey. See, Bobby put all the tea out there on the table, honey. He's doing the soundtrack for Ghostbusters in the trailer. And instead of him writing the goddamn lyrics, honey, guess who was writing the damn lyrics? His homeboy was the Ghost Rider. Yeah, it was Ghost Riders back then too, baby. Because Bobby Brown, instead of writing the lyrics, he's back there fucking three bitches. So he ain't had no time to be writing and shit. He was already big. His friend was writing the fucking shit for Ghostbusters. And Bobby Brown went and busted that shit the fuck on out when his friend was done with the motherfucking lyrics. And that's how that went. So yeah, it was Ghost Riders back then. They was already pulling stunts back then in the 80s. So this is nothing new in 2018. Hello. Bobby told every goddamn thing. He wasn't playing. So at this point, He's dating Janet for her birthday. He buys her car, and he pops up at her house with the car, and guess who else is there? But they never showed him, but guess who else was there? Elder Barge was there. She said, Bobby Brown, I can't accept this gift right now. You know he in there and this and this and that. So Bobby, Bobby said, so when you gonna do, when we gonna be together? Like, what are you doing? She said, I'm gonna make it up to you or whatever, and later on, honey, she made it up to him, all right? Bobby Brown made it up to she made it up to Bobby Brown or whatever and um, they went back to the hotel room and they showed this very yeah it is <laughs> um, yeah. they went back people were so crazy they went back and um they went back to the hotel room and she made it up to Bobby, honey, because that was a very explicit sex scene between Bobby Brown and Janet Jackson. Yes, it was. So she was tearing that up. He was tearing that up. He was tearing it up. He was he was tearing Janet out the frame. He loved Janet. Like, that was his love. He wrote a song for her. That was his love of his life. He wrote that song for Janet. That was his love. He thought he was going to be with Janet. But then he didn't. He, he, she had to tell him, like, listen, I'm going to be with Elder Bard. We already engaged and this and this and that. They got into the whole light skin, dark skin thing. Do you even want a black man type thing? Or do you just want somebody that's high yellow and this and this and that? Because your family don't want you to marry no black guy. And yeah, they got into all that within one second, honey. It was crazy. And, um, and so they broke up. She went and married Elder Barge. And um, they went their separate ways. But basically he wanted to be with Janet he made that known in the movie that he wanted to be with Janet so huh baby so in April of 89 that's when they was already broken up and he went to the um Soul Train Awards and he seen um that's when he met with Whitney Houston when Houston was trying to get to her seat so, you know, she bumping Bobby all in the head, pushing him, doing this, doing that on purpose. Because, you know, she's a troublemaker. And he turned around and he said, well, you bumped me in the back of my head. And she said, I know, and turned back around. And at this point, yeah, Robin was with her already at the hip early from 89, child. We've seen Robin at the Soul Train Awards and every damn thing. And ever since then, Robin is that's in the movie. <laughs> ah, Robin is just everywhere, everywhere, Robin, Robin. <laughs> so, Robin is in the movie, and him and Whitney goes on a date or whatever, and um, they went on a date, and, well, he didn't know it was a date. Whitney Houston knew it was a date, but he, he you know how men are, he, he really wasn't trying to say it was a date because he didn't know how she was going to feel about it. So, when they went out to dinner, they... Um, Teddy Rally bumps into them or whatever and you know Teddy's in the music he got his little group at the table and he walks over to them and you know he's talking to Bobby Brown about another song and he said well I'm sorry to disturb your date and Bobby Brown said no this is not a and Whitney Houston jumps in and says uh huh <laughs> nigga this better be a date I'm Whitney Houston baby this is a date and he said oh I guess it's a date so so, so Teddy Rally said 
<laughs> but I guess it's a date, you know, it's, it's a date. <laughs> it was funny, it was real cute. So they dating each other, dating each other. So Bobby Brown goes to London and at this time he's doing every little step I take now. And you know, that's my jam, so I was here with it. I was here with it, like that's gonna always be my jam. I remember the video and everything with the big letters and all that good stuff. And Bobby Brown was wearing MC Hammer pants and everything. And if y'all didn't watch the MC Hammer movie, that movie was lit too, honey. MC Hammer was lit, honey. And it was crazy. And that's why I said, if you watch all the three movies, the New Edition movie, the Whitney Houston movie, and this movie, you can put it together. Straight out of Compton. And um, that other girl's movie with the squeaky voice, I forget her name. And um, MC Hammer's movie. You can put all those together. And you can see where everything is like the story has been told and who's telling what and what and what. All the movies link up together. And... Yeah, because MC Hammer went over there and he was with Tupac and all of them. Yeah, he got, yeah, he became a hardcore rapper. Y'all forgot about that? Yeah, yeah, he stopped doing the hammer dancing shit. And yeah, it got real. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but back to Bobby. So, Whitney Houston flew into his UK tour. And, um, she was in the room waiting for him to get off stage. And he told his brother that he wanted to be alone. And he went to be alone with Whitney. And then suddenly, a knock on the door. Kim, his baby mother... <laughs> the one T.I. tapped on the butt. Yeah, I have to add that in there. That shit is funny. But anyway, she got a baby by him, and she bought the other baby. This how I really, this how I really shit is thirsty, so you know. She bought the other baby that from the first baby, London, the oldest child, with her too. Oh, your kids wanted to see you. So she busts up in the room, sees Whitney there. She catches her attitude. Whitney looking at her like, whatever, bitch. So... Whitney said, that look like you got a problem right there. He said, no. She said, oh, okay. He said, you cool? She said, I'm good. I'm from Jersey, baby. Huh. Whitney Houston looked at that nigga like, I does this nigga. I don't give a fuck about that bitch. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. So Whitney was with the shit, sonny, baby, because she from Jersey. So she got upset. And um, they was dating. Him and Whitney started dating. And they was going hard for like three years. They went hard for like three years, real good, without being married or nothing. And it, it got so crazy that he started bringing Whitney and Houston around his family. And he and the family members was asking him, like, so what are you going to do? Like, you just going to keep Whitney Houston on hold? Like, this is Whitney Houston. You know who Whitney Houston is, nigga. Like, his family members was looking at this nigga like, so you're not going to ask her to marry you? You like, you like her? Like, they was... They liked each other from jump. Like he, they fell head over heels for each other real quick. And um, his family was like, you need to propose to her or whatever. So of course he did. And he didn't propose to her right away though. So after that whole debacle at the house or whatever, they was playing cards, having a little family day and Whitney was there. That's when they asked all those questions. And then um, somehow, somewhere he got the Kim house and he winded up on the couch. And you know how females are. I guess she wanted her old stuff back. So she put the moves on Bobby. Bobby was weak. You know, Bobby was a bad boy. He was not about to turn his baby mother down. He sleeps 